where archaeology meets mortality. Archaeodeath. Hello, it's Professor Howard Williams here. I thought I'd come outdoors during the lockdown. A um, little bit of vegetation as backdrop, um, probably occasional car and a random uh, walker uh, to give you um, another video about my research on the in, in the areas of the archaeology of death um, and burial and commemorative practice in the past and um, today I'd like to sort of feature um, one of my past uh, publications and uh, talk a little bit about it. Um, this is an edited collection I put together that stemmed originally from a 2008 uh, Southampton Theoretical Archaeology Group uh, conference session um, and we was built up and rather than pitch it as an edited book um, uh, the select proceedings of the conference and additional commission papers were drawn together into a special issue of a journal. Now that's a particularly challenging thing to do. Um, edited books are one massive challenge and load of work. Organising peer review, getting uh, papers uh, um, together, getting them submitted, writing an introduction and perhaps contributing a piece oneself as well as steering them through to publication. Um, but special issues of journals have another layer to them because you've got to please not only yourself as editor but um, your peer reviewers and make sure they, they're satisfied but you've got to get them through an editorial board and an editorial team to uh, to, to, to the set their satisfaction. And I decided to pitch uh, the, the, the 2008 session, a tag, which was um, at a journal called Mortality. And there's mortality in all its glory. And mortality is a uh, interdisciplinary journal uh, published by uh, Routledge, Taylor Francis, um, with a sociological focus, but it also has historians, archaeologists, and a range of other disciplinary uh, specialists in. And for 2011, it came out uh, three years, two and a half years after the conference uh, that uh, spawned it. Um, the special issue, Archaeologists on Contemporary Death, with me as guest editor, um, is a series of papers um, which bring archaeological perspectives to the contemporary world. Um, for some, popular perceptions of archaeology still are that archaeology is about the distant past. Um, and yet we've had over 35, 40 years of research by archaeologists into the 20th and 21st centuries. Some would encapsulate that within um, sort of post-medieval archaeology, but traditionally that's been the 15th, 16th, 17th, early 18th centuries. Industrial archaeology has been a sort of catch-all term for anything about the late 18th, 19th centuries. But the term contemporary archaeology has increasingly referred to the 20th and early 21st centuries. There's different debates about the cutoff and start of contemporary archaeology as opposed to other fields, and that's a whole debate I don't want to get into. But for the purposes of my special issue, we were really looking at late, mid to late 20th century and early 21st century mortuary practice and commemorative um, evidence. So in other words, looking with an archaeologist's perspective, allowing the material evidence to tell the story, uh, focusing on our death ways, our meaning anyone in the world alive today or with recent who was recently alive. And in that regard, uh, it reflects the biases of a conference session and my contacts and networks and uh, there are many other areas and themes that could have been drawn upon. But for this special issue, which is volume 16, part two, uh, came out in May 2011 um, in the journal Mortality, um, there are six uh, articles um, uh, supported by an introductory editorial comment and I my, I did a really a rare for me a very short editorial comment called archaeologists on contemporary death where I sort of sketched out quite robustly the, the many ways in which archaeologists have things to say about um, the, the, the challenges and transformations of death in the contemporary world and we're undergoing a, a massive change with the current COVID-19 pandemic with funerals restricted, cemetery spaces restricted and uh, you know, other factors playing into as well as an unprecedented number of deaths. Um, uh, you know, hospitals not coping and so on or struggling to cope and so on. And so um, 
we're aware that the modern world or the late, late modernity or some would call it post-modernity um, has no single coherent attitude or perspective on death despite being characterized as a, a period of tame death actually death is, in, is, is practiced and experienced incredibly with incredible variability across space and, and is changing rapidly uh, through the late 20th and into the 21st century uh, but we do identify identify a series of ways in which mortuary archaeologists contribute to contemporary death. Uh, mortuary archaeology itself is, 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 is a sub-discipline of archaeology shaped by contemporary uh, Western thinking, uh, particularly. Um, the material products of antiquarian and archaeological practices still are reused and replicated in profusion in our contemporary death ways and contemporary culture more broadly. I mean, everything from tomb raiding to uh, the art associated with our modern day dead is inspired by this. Um, we, we, mortuary archaeological practices can be regarded also as a distinctive mechanism by which we mediate uh, identities and mortalities in the present. Um, museum displays and media representations reveal our complex engagements with archaeology and mortality and indeed that's something I picked up on in the Archaeologists of the Dead uh, edited collection with Mel Giles a number of years later and also that I would say archaeologists are among the key stakeholders as well as mediators in our current sort of thinking about death we have a voice on repatriation and reburial we're helping to work with indigenous communities themselves stakeholders to 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 work to repatriate and regain a sense of their identity and heritage so we, we are we are in many ways connected up and I suggest in this introduction um, six key ways in which we can as archaeologists of uh, investigate contemporary death and contemporary ways of disposing of the dead and commemorating the dead um, with forensic archaeology there's a lot of been a lot of uh, work by forensics uh, um, in forensics of using archaeological techniques and there's a great synergy and interplay there between the investigation of crimes um, individual clandestine burials and uh, um, understanding them, reconstructing them, as well as um, mass deaths, uh, genocides and other kinds of perpetration of, of, of violence. Um, so archaeology has a role to play that in the forensic process. We have a long-term uh, perspective on landscapes, monuments and society, so we, when we're studying any landscape we can maybe be dealing with uh, uh, an 18th century church, uh, uh, we may be dealing with uh, um, uh, some Bronze Age barrows nearby, and we also may be dealing with a local um, a municipal cemetery. These these different funerary archaeologies in, interact with each other in the landscape, and we need we have expertise in dealing with that multi-period and complex picture. We have a, an ability to investigate traces of abandoned spaces and uh, deposits uh, in our contemporary world drawing on a lot of experience from other periods and places and um, we are them we are themselves archaeologists themselves the subject of archaeological study in terms of um, how we as a subset deal with engagement deal with death and deal and, and almost commemorate ourselves um, that's an interesting topic of how archaeologists uh, contribute to this mortuary uh, arena um, and in many ways, most studies of post-medieval death, though they focus on the 16th to 19th centuries, they do bleed into, they do take on and develop into studies of spaces that continue to be active, they're active spaces through the 20th and 21st centuries. But all those aside, all those reasons aside, the, the, the core reason at the end of the day is that we as archaeologists, we are, can study the contemporary in its own right. We don't have to justify it in saying, well, you know, we are part of this, we contribute to popular culture, we, um, we're looking at long-term landscape changes, we're looking at death rituals and, and mortuary spaces that go on, uh, that connect up from the earlier periods. We can just study it in its own right as a focus of investigation that death in modern, late modernity or post-modernity, depending on the term you use, um, super modernity, I, these different terms are in, interplay. Um, this, this period of time in which we live, the Anthropocene, um, you know, add that to the mix as well. This is a time when we are transforming the globe on a massive scale, but the human population and the, the way in which we're dealing with death and the dead um, is fundamentally different from any other period of time. 
yes there are connections yes there are themes that we can discuss as archaeologists backwards and forwards and across and comparatively across space but we have a real opportunity um, to speak about um, our complex and materially rich and diverse death ways now uh, and see things that other disciplines aren't looking for and I think that's one of the key things about our contemporary archaeology of death is that we can look at things with a different gaze, a different lens, a different critical eye. So that's been an introduction to the special issue from May 2011 on mortality and um, I hope you can pick it up, download it uh, if you have access or uh, my contributions are on my Academia Edu page and I'm going to be uploading them soon to Humanities Commons. In addition to that I would say um, that the paper by Ingmarie Bakdan Yeltsin um, looking at uh, a, a sort of perspective on contemporary Swedish uh, death rituals and archaeologists themselves as a, as a, as a focus of um, uh, attention, the graves of archaeologists, is, is a fascinating study. I would also say that Samuel Walls's investigation um, based on a doctoral uh, thesis that he was ongoing and conducting um, at the University of Exeter was um, is a really fascinating study because he looks at uh, the relationship between uh, the war dead in 20th century churchyards. Um, Kara Krompetich looks at um, um, repatriation and the material generation of material culture I should say by those groups involved in in, in uh, repatriation processes and and that's really fascinating. Tim Floor Sorensen looked at uh, the biographical uh, a commemoration of children in Danish churchyards and um, finally Anna Davenport and Carl Harrison evaluate uh, the forensic archaeology of children's graves and animal graves in the UK. So those those five studies uh, I think are, are really fascinating and but they they obviously with any collection there's gaps huge yawning gaps and there's so much more that could be done so I, I'd like to think that we can we can build on this and um, future work can, can really augment a contemporary archaeology of death. So in a subsequent video I will review my paper on cremation and present past a contemporary archaeology of the Swedish, of Swedish memory grows but for now that's all I wanted to say so um, look at my Ed Academia Edu page uh, look at my Humanities Commons page which I'll be adding more information to in due course more, more articles and uh, check out the Archaeodeath blog for many, paper, many posts where I address aspects of contemporary landscapes, material culture and monuments. Um, so I take an archaeological perspective. So actually this volume is in many ways the birth of Archaeodeath and many of my posts on contemporary archaeologies of death on the Archaeodeath blog. Um, so in many ways this is one of the well it's one of the things that inspired me to start uh, blogging in 2013 uh, two years after this this came out uh, to take forward the project of looking from an archaeologist perspective on our death ways if you've enjoyed this archaeo death video why not check out the archaeo death blog at howardwilliamsblog.wordpress.com